Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're having a wonderful day. In today's update, we have a little bit of everything for everyone. Some iPhone 11 stuff, the actual lens has been detailed by OnLeaks, and we've got a closer look than ever before at what Apple's doing and why. Some iOS 13 stuff, the new Apple Watch, and so on. So let's get straight into it. So I wanted to start with OnLeaks latest report detailing the iPhone 11 lens and some of the key details, the design details regarding this new iPhone that weren't very clear in the last release. So he shared the final design of the iPhone 11 with us originally and just last week they refined final design and now he's actually given us even further details. So I'm going to start with the lens. The iPhone 11 lens is ridiculously complex because of that triangular lens setup Apple had to shift around a lot of things and and the exterior is changing as a result. So OnLeaks basically does confirm the back is an entirely single sheet of glass now. We elaborated on that in the last video, easier to repair, just all around better design, I'd say. But the actual lenses themselves, I thought it would be a flat slab of glass covering the camera lens. Not so, says OnLeaks. Not only not so, but it's even more elaborate than you could have possibly thought. So first off, each of those camera lenses is gonna be an individual little circle. Just like on the iPhone 10 right now, it does protrude slightly. They will all be protruding slightly out of a very, very thin sliver of a camera border. So there will be three individually round camera border lenses there within that square glass design. So this could potentially be a bad thing or a good thing. So if you break and drop your iPhone 11, you won't have to replace the entire camera lens glass. You could just replace one individual one. So that might be more complex or less complex. I don't know about that yet. What's interesting is beneath the glass, there's a chamfer. There's an actual run up to the cameras underneath the glass. And he tries to elaborate on this. My designer kind of understood it in this way. So I'm trying to show you that. It looks really cool. Like there's gonna be some depth to that camera if you actually look at it closely. You know, Apple isn't just slapping this thing on the back of the iPhone. They are very, very carefully looking into it and how to make it look as good as possible. Earlier, we thought that it would be a completely stealth out murdered lens. That is not the case. These new renders basically confirm that they will be body colored inside that lens and they are not the same piece of glass. I also thought about, can Apple make the entire back of the glass slab? Not so. So a body colored lens is certainly an interesting design choice. I like it, it stands apart, but you guys absolutely hate it. And you're coming to me as if I designed this. I'm simply taking the leaks and rumors and repurposing it into video and sharing it with you guys. You know, it's not my choice, but I will tell you one thing, is the closer we get to the actual release date, the better and better these will look. And obviously Apple's renders, Apple's materials, the finishes will be ultimately way better than what we can show you today. So the final product always looks better. Another thing I'd like to add is within this lens, the cameras are actually very, very close together. I think closer than ever before. So Apple has compacted this lens as much as possible, try to make it as small as possible, even though it still looks huge. Considering how big of a camera upgrade this will be, this is the best Apple could have done with the given resources at this time. And an interesting thing to consider regarding the future of Apple's design. Johnny Ive's design team comprises of a small amount of people. I believe somewhere around a dozen or so people, dozen to 20, and three of those have have left. Two of them have been with Apple for 35 years and have influenced the Apple Watch, the iPhone, MacBooks, just everywhere. So Apple is hiring some new talent right now and that may be reflected in the future of their product. You know, we don't really know if this means the design will get better or worse, but fresh perspective is never a bad thing. And coming from Mac Stories, the iOS 13 update for iPads could finally include mouse support. This wouldn't be an official feature, so to speak. It would be hidden in the accessibility settings. Apple kind of wants to cover all bases for all the disabled people, let's say you can't raise your arm to actually navigate the iPad display, they would add that mouse support. I assume there would be an actual cursor on screen. What it would look like, we don't know, but that may be coming to future versions of iOS. And Steve Trotton Smith actually pitched in here and said, yes, it's very likely iOS 13 will include support for that mouse. And here's a beautiful iOS 13 concept. I really cannot pronounce the name. I don't want to botch it. This is some good, good stuff. I always like some out of the picture thinking, something that Apple could introduce to the iPad with iOS 13 or beyond. So there's some really great ideas here, such as dragging from the corner feature, something I actually haven't seen being mentioned anywhere, a redesigned control center, 
of course, that mouse support and so on. It's certainly worth a look. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And yet another report is confirming that the 18 watt fast wireless charger will be included in the box with this year's iPhone. This latest one is coming from Mac Atacara and it's corroborating an earlier report that said the same thing. So Apple is changing up the game. They're not switching to USB-C, but they are giving you a healthy compromise with that 18 watt USB-C charger and will of course include that lightning to USB cable in the box. So about time Apple has given us this. And there have been a couple of developments regarding modems on the iPhone for the next couple of years. In Intel very likely will indeed be providing their new Intel 7660 modem for this year's iPhones. It's still a 4G modem. Apple will not be going with Intel for 5G. Those are going to be Qualcomm and Samsung, but this is Intel's last hurrah before they shut down that part of their business. And listen to this, Samsung is investing an insane amount of money into their chip division. Not only does Samsung wanna take on Qualcomm, they wanna take on Intel now with their actual chips for computers. So they really wanna branch out, they wanna become a dominant power in the microprocessor war. And Samsung has recently announced they are working on five nanometer technology. It is being tested at the moment. So they are already capable of it. They just have to refine that process and they hope to sell them in 2020. And looking closely, it appears that Samsung's chips in five nanometer format will actually be not as powerful nor as dense nor as energy efficient as Apple's five nanometer ones, but still for Samsung versus their seven nanometer process, it will be quite the increase. And some upcoming Apple Watch stuff. So nine to five Mac is saying that the upcoming version of watch OS, whether it be watch OS six or beyond, will include more authentication processes using your Apple Watch. Right now you can only basically unlock your Mac with your Apple Watch. They're saying that through some sort of interface on the watch itself, possibly you will be able to authorize more things, probably everything you can do right now with Touch ID on the Mac using your Apple Watch. So that's a pretty cool change. Now there's also this Watch OS 6 concept I'd like to share with you. It actually goes into detail. It's very outlandish. I mean, it introduces Safari onto the Apple Watch, but there are some really good ideas here as well. The Apple Watch calculator, I don't know why that isn't a thing, but it should be by default. There's that new sleep app, which using that, I still don't understand how you're supposed to charge your Apple Watch throughout the day. I just do not have time to set it aside. The Apple Watch needs more battery life for that to happen, but there are a slew of new applications here. Do check that one out as well. Okay, and I almost spit out my coffee when I read this one. I did make a lot of USB killer videos. I know this does not make for a very good prank. Whoever said this is a good prank on a roommate or someone, this is not a prank. This is a destruction of property. So be very careful what you do with the USB killer. But I hope I did not help instigate this. So a student from a New York private college actually took a USB killer. This is after graduating. I don't know why he would do that, but he came back and he recorded himself sticking that USB killer into what, like 60 computers, $58,000 worth of damage here. Now he's facing up to 250 grand in fines and up to 10 years in prison. I think that's terribly harsh. There's no way you should even get one year for that. If anything, you should pay that back and then some, but that's terrible. Do not use USB killer. It could land you in jail unless it's your own personal property. Into an Xbox, three, two, one. Oh, shoot. Don't know if I should touch that or what. I'm gonna unplug it from the back. Two, one. Oh, okay, that one did it. So reading that, I can't help but feel like I had something to do with it, but I really, really hope I did not. So uh, yeah, here we go, three, two, one. Oh shit, that actually worked. And the Android police wrote a very great article regarding Super Zoom and how it's our future of smartphones. Basically right now, every smartphone is trying to do something ridiculous to get your attention to buy them. And the latest trend has been Super Zoom, up to five times Zoom and beyond. And leading the race is the Huawei P30. So I can't wait to take a look at this. It has that periscope solution inside. I showed it to you on the iPhone, something I'd like on the iPhone, but doesn't seem practical yet. Who knows, who knows? But either you need to add more cameras or that periscope solution to make it work. Point is, it's here to stay. It's a feature that people need. If you're taking a picture of a landmark of your kid at a sporting event and so on, if you need Zoom, that's just a feature that everyone is gonna need at one point in their life. And it certainly makes sense that all of these manufacturers are pushing for it. So I'm excited to see three times Zoom on this year's iPhone, but beyond that, I certainly think we do need more. Okay, and I'm including this just to see what happens. I'm very genuinely curious. Gene Muster, a Wall Street analyst, is saying that within the next 24 months, so two years, Apple stock will rise 70%. 
and that's $350 a share versus 204 right now. I'm genuinely curious. Apple has a lot of big moves they're making in the next couple of years, even though it doesn't seem like it. Things will become a lot more clear this coming September. So $350, certainly out there, but could it happen? Let's see. Last thing I'd like to mention is iOS 12.3. So I'm not showing you any new features because there simply aren't any that I was able to find anyways. Since beta two, there really hasn't been anything new. But I will tell you one thing, using this thing in a household with HomePods has made that experience so much better. My HomePods connect faster, they actually reliably connect now, and Beta 4 seems to be even more stable. So I'm excited for the final release of that. I actually have two 10s Maxes now, one on 12.1.2 for the jailbreak and one on the latest Beta, so that way I get to experience the best of both worlds. But anyways guys, there it is, the latest in Apple. I'll keep you guys updated on anything in between and got a couple cool videos this week. Stay tuned, peace.